that your father didn't treat you the same way they treated that sister or brother, who are you to judge how they feel? Who are you to judge the actions they take toward the same father you have and love and admire? Who are you to judge if they don't have the same reverence for that father that you have? You're not. Hey, what's up, guys? What's up, guys? So I wanted to uh, talk really quick. I had two messages, uh, videos lined up, two ideas for uh, trying to further this discussion around race, around uh, conflict, around you know what's going on. Um, so I had two videos that I that I had planned to talk about or or shoot today. But this morning I woke up. Actually, actually last night my son. Uh, brought to my attention um, the comments made by by Drew Brees about the American flag. Um, so I thought, you know, it's just current event. Let's kind of talk about it. And I want to frame this message in the context of story and analogy. Uh, you know, I think we all learn. I, I I know we all learn different ways. So and sometimes sometimes we can we can switch how we present. What we're trying to talk about in hopes that uh, a different perspective a different story and analogy uh might be easier to consume for the target audience right so uh this this message uh is directly pointed at uh my white brothers and sisters uh in direct response to the dialogue that's happening between drew Brees, uh, a, a caucasian white quarterback um, and his African American black teammates, uh, the the black community at large, the black athlete community at large. So he's going back to to the protest. I'm not sure how it came about in his interview, uh, but somehow the the kneeling uh, in response to the American anthem, to national anthem, was brought about again. Obviously, in the time we're in now, it was extremely painful for people to hear that kind of a message in the midst of what's going on now. So Malcolm Jenkins, uh, his teammate, uh, Michael Thomas, his teammate, his receiver, uh, have all spoken out. And so I wanna lend some perspective from my point of view. And before you guys uh, start fighting with me, I do encourage you guys to, to, to dialogue. You know, tell me your perspective, tell me what you're thinking. Uh, but before I go into that, let me preface this by saying, I am the son of a Vietnam vet. I am the son of a man who served 23 years in the US Army. I'm the son of a vet who served two tours in Vietnam. I am the son of a man who went on from that to be a correctional officer for 24 years. So combined, that's, uh, what is that, 48 years, 47 years of service in the military and Department of Corrections. Right. I'll preface this talk by saying that I have an American flag in my front house, front of my house. I'll preface this by saying I am partly hypocritical because I watch all of the football games that my Dallas Cowboys played, even though my owner, Jerry Jones, has a stance on the national anthem, which I didn't totally agree with. So I, too, have been hypocritical, as all of us are. But instead of me shouting to you guys as to what I, I, I believe to be right, I'm going to tell you how I feel and my perspective and then allow you to tell me what you feel and your perspective. All right. So I'm going to do this from the standpoint of, of a story slash analogy. Right. So if we're going to use this term brothers and sisters. Let's really go dive into that. Right. We all say we're all brothers and sisters under God. We're all Christ's children. We are. Right, but let's not pretend and just say it because it sounds right. Let's take the analogy even further. Right, so if you're my brother, my white brother, if you're my sister, my white sister, if you're my brother, my brown brother, you're my sister, my brown sister, and we're a family, let's take it one step further. Let's assume we have the same father. And let's assume that father in this case is the United States of America. 
right? Now, if you have siblings, you know oftentimes that siblings aren't treated exactly the same, right? And, and, and in fact, sometimes one sibling might be treated horribly, even beaten, even molested, even tortured, even demeaned. So even in the same family with the same father, the two children might be treated completely differently. And so you as the sibling who has been treated better, what right do you have to judge how your sibling views the same father that you both have? So when you both go to a celebration of your father, say a Father's Day dinner, who are you to be judgmental if your sibling doesn't share in the same celebration as you do for the same father? When you know that father abuses him or her, when you know that father has molested him or her, who are you to judge how they feel about the same father? Sure, that father provided for you both. That father may have sent both of you to college. That, that father may have provided a car for both of you. That father may have provided food, shelter, and clothing for the both of you, but it wasn't the same father to both of you. It wasn't the same person to both of you. It wasn't the same experience for both of you. So even at the funeral, to go deeper with it, who are you to judge that sibling if they don't cry the way you cried? If they don't feel the same uh, uh, desperation and sadness as you feel? And they might be conflicted because, yes, they see some of the good that their father has given to them. But they have experienced all of the bad that the father has given to them. And you have experienced none of that. None of that. So if that's truly your brother or that's truly your sister, and you know in conscious that your father didn't treat you the same way they treated that sister or brother, who are you to judge how they feel? Who are you to judge the actions they take toward the same father you have and love and admire? Who are you to judge if they don't have the same reverence for that father that you have? You're not. You're not one to judge. Right? We're not saying you can appreciate the relationship you have with your father, that you have with your country. All we're saying is acknowledge and appreciate that there might be a different relationship between your sibling and his father, between your sibling, between your black brother and his country. That's all we're asking. We understand the love you have for your father. In fact, many times we feel sad that we don't have the same love from your father. And all we're saying, all Malcolm Jenkins is saying, all Michael Thomas is saying is stop pretending that you didn't see what he did to me. Stop pretending that you don't see how he treats me. And then stop making me feel bad if I don't have the same reverence as you have for him. The same respect and love that you have for him. And stop throwing in my face the fact that he gave me so much. That he gave both of us food, shelter, clothing, opportunity. Yeah, he gave you that. He gave me that, kind of. But he gave me a lot more pain, a lot more guilt, a lot more death, a lot more rape than he gave you. And all we ask is that you acknowledge and, and understand that and stop speaking about, about you, speaking out about what you experience with this father without acknowledging and appreciating and, and understanding what we experienced, right? And if you wanna call me your brother, if you wanna call me your sibling, then act like it then treat me like it, then understand and love me 
like it. That's it, guys. I love you. Have a good day.